Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And on behalf of our Dean, as well as our Bishop, I'm grateful and have the privilege of welcoming you to this morning's service of morning prayer. It is my pleasure to be able to meet you at such a time like this in the morning as we look forward to the day that is ahead of each of us. And so as we gather on this morning, won't you join me in a word of prayer? Almighty, we thank you for the beautiful day that you have set before us. We thank you for the opportunities that you have filled as part of this day. May we be now mindful of your love towards us, the grace that you have extended us, the mercy that you have given us, and that we would be on this day forever thoughtful of your presence with us. So bless us as we have gathered together in this morning that we would be the witnesses and that we would be mindful of all that you've done, all that you're doing, and what you shall do. This we ask on this beautiful day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading for this morning comes to us out of the Gospel of Luke, the eighth chapter, the 19th through the 21st verses. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He being Jesus replied, my mother and my brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. This morning we have a very short reading, but it's filled with so much for us to be able to glean on this day. That when we think about all that was taking place before this moment, how the disciples were wrestling with the parables that Jesus had been putting before them, they were struggling with the meaning, asking to understand more. As Jesus shared with them just before this moment, the parable of the sower, they struggled with the meaning. As he shared with them the lamp on a stand, and they were thinking about all of the responsibilities of what it means to be a disciple. All of a sudden, we recognize that there was his mother and his brothers who had come to see him. But because of the crowd that had already gathered, they couldn't get near him. There were many who were perhaps expecting uh, Jesus to respond in a certain way, that the moment he realized that his mother and his brothers were present, that uh, he would stop what he was doing, that he would all of a sudden shift his focus. But in a very surprising response, he still talked to them about the relationship of his disciples and what it means to do God's work. He replied and he simply said, my mother and my brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. This has often challenged me as with many of the passages of scripture that we read, that it's one thing to hear, but it's another thing to do. We know that we are encouraged in this walk of faith to not just be hearers, but to be doers. But somehow many of us, we struggle on the doing part. And when he says here, my mother and my brothers, specifically addressing what they had brought to him in it for his awareness and his response, he says, it's those who hear God's word and put it into practice. He challenged them to think about relationships in a new way. Perhaps to think about them more 
different than the way that sometimes we like to set our values in terms of our relationships. We place our relationships so much on the physical natures, how we look, where we live, being close in community, perhaps same nationality and in these times, certainly upon racial lines. But here we still make the claim when we are sitting together in worship, when we are joining together in moments of reflection, that we make the claims of being God's children. And in this, Jesus says, God's children, the mothers, the brothers, those who are connected one to another, to think about relationships differently, that we're united when we're putting it into practice. It's a challenge to think how we love our neighbors as ourselves. It's a challenge to realize who our neighbors really are, not just those who live on the streets where we live, not just those who are restricted to the communities in which we live, not just to the borders and lands that we defined that fit our areas of comfort and even the limits of our own understanding, but to realize that we're all God's children and to be God's child in relationship with one another is to love our neighbors as ourselves, is to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. It is to show love everywhere we go and to put it into practice. Whether you on this day are headed out for work, whether you are in your place of residence, whether you're headed out to the grocery store running errands, the real question that we have on today is will we put it into practice? When we're talking to family members, when we're speaking to friends and associates, that we put it into practice. So on this day, we are all mindful of his presence with us, but through us, will others be able to see that he's living and present with all of us. Won't you join me in that word of prayer that many of us learned in our youth? And I commend to you on this day to remember in times like these. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Won't you continue in prayer with me? Almighty, we come before you on this beautiful day and we're praying for all who have been affected by the pandemics of coronavirus, pandemic of racism and prejudice. We pray for each and every one around the world. We pray for our leaders and we pray not just for those leaders on these shores, but around the world, that they would work in this moment for the common good. We ask special blessings and prayers upon those who are working for a cure. Grant them wisdom. We pray that we would have compassion one for another. We ask that you would bless those who are on the front lines our essential workers, those who are visible and those who are often working in the shadows, whose efforts help our lives, but whose faces we often do not see. So we ask now that you would fill us, that you would keep us, and that you would now send us to all of the places that you have prepared for us. 
This is our prayer. We ask in your name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This day and always. This we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.